How's everybody doing here tonight? I'm glad, I'm glad. Uh, I am Fiction Boy, aka the Grumpy Husky, also the wholesome, aggressive content creator on TikTok. Um, one of my hobbies is, is that I play guitar a lot, which you've probably never seen me do on TikTok a lot. But um, I'm also a full-time college student, and I have some good news. I got my final grades in. Straight A student. Yeah. 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 You want to get the time? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Diffuse Moose. I, so most of you know me I, uh, through Twitch, at least. I, I stream on Twitch. I have, I'm actually here as a student, too, because I had to learn from the both of you. I don't do all the TikTok stuff and all that, so it's pretty fascinating. Um, also, sorry, I kind of don't have my, my moose. I just have my little part-time G-Chef here. I couldn't find my, my moose nub. Pretty embarrassed about that. But yeah, I mean, I, I mostly just stream on, on Twitch. Um, that's, that's definitely my platform of choice. I love it. Been doing it now for hard to believe over four years. So, um, yeah, that's me. How about you? I am Whiplash Wolf. You guys may know me through TikTok. I am the. What was it you said? You're the wholesome creator. Yeah, I'm the lewd creator. The same things. I do. If you know my videos, I do a lot of the top and bottom videos, so, which we do have one in the lineup whenever we get to it, but, I, you could if you want to, but, but, uh, as hobbies, you guys don't see it in my videos, I've only done it in one video where I made like a IRL hobby list that I've done, and usually I'm a car enthusiast, so, if any of you guys are car enthusiasts, I'd be glad to talk to you guys about it afterwards. But, that's me. I'm not important, but uh, my name is Colton. I'll be moderating the panel, basically making sure that these all these wonderful people stay on topic and bring up topics that might be of interest to any of you. How the lineup's gonna be is that we just finished introductions. The next 30, 35 minutes is gonna be a controlled Q&A. Basically, just discussion between the three panelists. And then the last 15 minutes or so, we're going to have either a Q&A from the audience members, or we'll have like a meetup where you can talk and interact with the panelists up here. So depending on how many if people have questions or not. So if you have no questions at the end, you can actually meet them and take selfies with them. So. I've never seen that before. Contact the show rock. Yeah. Object? <laughs> it's fire. Object? It, it, I'm still waiting on another fire alarm. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it was third time. Yeah, third time's a charm. Maybe it'll be the last one. Okay. Oh, oh, you're going to be asking some questions. All right, let's go with the first one. Uh, I'll speak loud enough, I guess. So, first question could be, how'd you get into content creation? What's your backstory about that? I got into content creation a long, long time ago, but, um, I, oh, okay. <laughs> I got into content creation a long, long time ago since I was a 14-year-old kid. Um, I watched many content creators, which you probably know most of them I know, which would be uh, Markiplier. He was one of my inspirations. I've watched... Uh, he doesn't do YouTube now, but he went on to music career, Joji, or AKA Filthy Frank, one of yeah. the guys I watched as a kid. And lastly, uh, Van Oz Gaming, and I met the guy personally, one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Um, I tried doing YouTube at first, and I failed at that probably five times. And eventually, I went on to TikTok, thanks to my mother. She told me to try that first, and here I am, which I have didn't expect to get to where I am. And I think all people, you know, who support me, and I appreciate it, it's, it's just surprising. <laughs> you just go down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, so for me, I um, had a bunch of friends, if you guys remember this thing called Mixer, 
uh, once upon a time that it was a thing that existed. And uh, I had a bunch of friends I used to hang out with in Discord. This is actually before I got like super, super heavily involved in the fandom and everything. So they weren't involved with that, but they were streaming on Mixer. And um, it always looked like a really good and like a fun time. Like they were able to bond with their, their communities and everything. And I'm like, why not give that a shot? On top of that, too, I was working at uh, Treyarch at the time. And I was pulling just crazy amounts of like, overtime. My life was like, you know, wake up, shower, go to work work like 12 hour days, come home, rinse and repeat, you know, like really, I wasn't making enough time for myself. So I thought I'd give, uh, I'd, I'd force in some free time on, on uh, in streaming. And it's been an amazing experience, just building a community, getting to meet new friends, um, going to cons like these. And, and it, I, that's why I recommend to anyone out there, if you're even on the fence about getting into streaming or content creation, do it because uh, it opens the world to meeting a whole bunch of new people. And when you go to a con, in my opinion, I feel like you're never alone. And that's a big fear of a lot of people going to cons. So anyway. My story of how I got into content creation is not really a normal one. Me, I never used to be an extroverted person. I always used to be introverted. And the only people I'd really talk to would be my close friends. And I don't know what happened to me one day, but everything just, <laughs> <laughs> and this is what happened one day is I don't went off in my head but I guess I was probably just playing with some people in VR chat and it wasn't like starting with VR chat like content creation because I never knew how to do that in the first place but I just changed the fact like I'm more extroverted I like talking to people now it actually could have been VR chat VR chat is a great platform if you guys don't have it to just communicate and just hang out with furries online. It's very big on there, that's for sure. But I feel like that's what helped me, motivated me, become more extroverted, talk to the community, and just like grow myself out there and want to become a content creator. So I started doing content creation in my fursuit, my original fursuit, not this one yet. I've been, I've been doing some of it, but it's not many as the first one was. And I just started doing it and started getting a small following on TikTok and since then, it's been just a slow start. It was a slow start, but it's grown exponentially into what it is now. And I appreciate everyone who does like my content, like because I never think it's good, even if I put one out like every day. I just I still don't think it's good. And then when people actually do like it, comment on it, it makes me happy knowing that people enjoy the content I do. So. Um. So, like, Whip put up a good um, idea about, like, he has, like, there are certain passions that he uses for content. So, um, how about you, Diffuse or Fiction? Like, what are some of your passions? What motivates you to create content? To believe, to give people a chance that just because you are different from society norms doesn't mean that you should ever stop. And um, I have a lot going for me, which I cannot say anything right now. We do have some certain projects happening, but don't worry, limit yourself just because you're different. There's many people that you can look up to that are famous today, like the music band Kiss. People thought they were weird back in the day, and nobody liked them. But that never stopped them, and I always looked up to guys like them. That's no, yeah, that's a good point. Um, for me, I mean, my my passions are kind of like all over the place between putting out the best quality that I can for streams, like, and I know that a lot of us are guilty of that too. Not to like look at certain people that I know, you know, out there, who are just always working on their streams, wanting to pump out like the best they can, you know. Um, so. Passions can be anything from making sure that I do that. I like keep, you know, make the best quality, pump out the best quality, like looking and sounding streams that I can. Uh, but also, like, trying to find new or different things that I can um, bring to the table for not only my community, but I guess the fandom, you know, streaming in general. Like, whether it's doing art streams, like, I even want to get into maybe, because my, for my job, I do more UI art, UI design, that kind of thing in the game industry. And I've never really seen anyone do streams like that before. So like, even that's an idea potentially to bring that to the table that no one else has done. So um, 
I guess just bringing bringing my own my own flavor to the table, but also at the same time another passion. Uh, again, I'm, it's not unique to me, but to a lot of streamers, is making sure to bring a certain element of like of positivity and everything, uh, making people smile. And it, it's weird because even if you're just streaming, right? Um, you think you're not really doing anything fancy or whatever, but just coming out there and bringing like a kind of a fun, easygoing personality can still make someone else's day out there. You have no idea who you're affecting out there who's watching you. Um, so I think that's it's it's just a it's become a passion to just want to stream to brighten other people's days. So yeah. Speaking on the uh, streaming part, I do some myself. Now, I'm not as good as the Fuser here, of course. You're, yeah. you're, you're good, Fuse, you know this. But what he's saying about streaming, even if you're someone who doesn't have as many followers and you're still able to reach out to people that follow you or just watch your content as you're streaming, and you can make someone's day better just by being silly, goofy, just being stupid while you're playing either VR or chat, which, to be fair, most players do that. And let's say Fortnite, any of these other games you might have, just bringing a smile onto people's faces makes me more motivated to do more content. Just make people happy. I don't even care about like, especially on Twitch, I don't care about money, revenue, or whatever it is. I rather just put people smile on people's faces and just enjoy doing what I'm doing, because it brings the community better, like closer, better, or brings the community together, and just to do something like that for people makes me more happy to do more content. Or you want to continue talking? I don't know, yeah, no, I, that's, that's my job as moderator, honestly. Um, so you guys have talked about creating content and kind of what drives your passions for creating content, but a lot of people here who um, will have content block or just artist block. So how, what are like some ways that you overcome like brain blocks for creating content. What will you elaborate what you mean by that? Oh, so like, um, say you have a, a mental block for your content creation. Like, do you like what are some of the steps that you take to remove the block? Remove the block to kind of yeah, the mental block. Okay. If you have no idea what kind of content you want to do, you can always ask your friends because they have plenty of ideas. That's my honest answer. Or you can take a break with, you know, not thinking about it. Kind of like how you do college work. You study so much and then you get tired of it because you can't remember it. Just take a mental break from it and it will come to you. Yeah, I mean, um, I think also like finding other inspiration from other content creators like that you just admire is another good way to go. Um, I think also, at least from the Twitch standpoint of things, like, I mean, there, there have been times, not just getting blocked, but feeling like there's like imposter syndrome and stuff like that, too. Um, feeling like, you know, you're not, you don't have that, that, that self-worth isn't there. But um, if you're just really not feeling like you're in the mood, I think definitely don't stream in those moments. If you would rather just take a break, because that, that negative attitude can... Um, it be infectious, just just as a positive attitude can be when you're streaming. But I found I will say that it really depends on how you're feeling in the moment because there there have been times when I've pushed through those kind of negative vibes or that the I've been feeling down or a block or whatever, and that is hit that go live button. And as soon as I start getting interaction from people in chat and everything, my mood instantly changed and I feel so much better. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. And speaking on the TikTok side of the point, to me, whenever I just can't think of any ideas, like I know sometimes when it comes to a mental block and you're trying to think of like what you can do whenever you can think of a video idea, like you don't want to be like everyone else but using the same sound and making an original sound is always, is always great. If you can make an original sound that's no one has used before, then that's amazing and it's always hard work to try to be different, different. <laughs> differentiate yourself from everyone else and I don't use like to me I try to think of original sounds but then whenever I actually finish with them like this is dumb so you just go through like, a list of what you want to do for sounds and what you want to use for your own sound now when it comes to sounds you find through TikTok that you want to use for your video 
Now that comes down to the point on how you want to use that sound yourself. Do you want to just use the sounds as it is, but try to make it funny? Like, you want to make the video seem funny, like whatever you're about to do through each clip of the sound clip itself? Or do you want to put like, what's the word definition? I don't know what it's like, wording above, in your TikTok. Captions. Captions, thank you. Just putting captions in your sound, using like, changing the words out, whatever the lyrics might be, or not lyrics, but the captions may be in the actual sound itself. Usually that's what I go for in most of my videos. I don't think I've actually ever used a sound as its intended purpose. Because usually it has nothing about furries, and usually you just try to change it around to be furry related. Now, as a mental block though, usually sometimes I do take a break from it, because if you do too much like content creation, it will affect you mentally, and you're not gonna have, you're just gonna be dead. Like you're not gonna have anything to think of. So you will sometimes at least wanna take a week off from doing content creation. Now, you can do it for like maybe four months straight, but not every day. I would say as a good timing schedule, especially for TikTok myself, I usually do it three days a week. I do it Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. Because usually that's just a good time frame just to spread out your videos so you know, you're not missing like what time your your audience may be looking at videos. Usually I do mine in the afternoon. But when it comes to the mental block part of it, just give yourself some time because if you do too much, you're just going to make yourself burned out, burned out, exhausted. exhausted. You're just going to exhaust yourself and you're not going to want to do it anymore. It's just going to be like more of a uh, inconvenience for you to do it because you don't want to do it anymore. And you just take a break from that so you don't tire yourself out from doing it. Uh, Whip also brings up a good point where he mentioned using original sounds not for the intended purpose or just putting it in a way where it's a different way of thinking about the sounds. So that brings up to my next point of what makes a piece of content successful versus unsuccessful. It's not always about the analytics, but what, in your mind, what do you think is a piece of successful content versus like unsuccessful, in your opinion? To me, when I think of a video that could be a fun video that an audience would like or a multitude of people would like, usually I think of a video that maybe, especially in the furry fandom, that someone has not done yet. Now, it's, it keeps getting harder with the more furries keep getting onto TikTok and start making content creation because since I've started, there has been like an absolute like wave of just furries starting to make content, which is great, honestly. I love seeing that. I love seeing people making content on TikTok. Makes me happy seeing more people do it because when I first started, now I didn't start when Musically was around. I started just last year in May, actually. So it's actually been one year. Nice. So, and when it comes around, just seeing those people come in is amazing. But for original sound, for me, like not like an original sound, but using a sound and to make it your video seem more get out there and make it special, it's just. <laughs> but making the original sound and making it your own. Uh, the best thing about it is, man, I'm gonna go to uh, unsuccessful content. Yeah. Nah, we're gonna continue with this, and I'm gonna get through it. I have it in my head. I just like lost it for a second. But um, to make a content your own, you just think of things, or think of things that furries have not done yet. Like with me, when I first started doing my top and bottom situations, I had not seen anything like that on TikTok, surprisingly, to be fair. So, doing that is what's gotten me to the point I am now on TikTok. Like, now I'm just the top and bottom wolf. I just do this because that's the only thing I can do. I can't think anything else. I just lost in my ideas of this. But it's worked. You just gotta think of different situations with it. But if you can make your own thing happen, that you make your own situation where furries happen. And you see it all the time, like every day. Like there's some days there'll be like a big furry video come out. And it's amazing, it's just great. It only has to be like the original sound of the auto you use, but you know, like I said, captions. If you just make it something you think is gonna be funny, I mean, you don't have to do this all the time. Just make the video how you wanna make it. Just make it whatever you like. 
don't go for like people's expectations because I did these videos for myself too. Like I did them because like this is to me true and funny. And apparently according to my followers, my audience, that I give out these videos to, apparently they find it hilarious too. And I'm glad to do that for them. You don't have to. So I, I think it's a little bit um, different for Twitch because it's, it's all a live experience, you know? Uh, but I still agree with what you were talking about as far as like creating unique, more unique content if you can, because that, that is, and like you were saying too, like Twitch is also getting very saturated, big time. I mean, compared to where I was like four years ago, like there, every, you blink and they're like, you know, 2,000 new, new furry streamers out there, which is not a bad thing, it's just, it's just like, holy crap, it's exploded. You know, so the more that you can do to kind of uh, set yourself apart from the pack, well, and, and this can vary from the making, making music to being overly boisterous and, you know, whatever you want to do, um, just kind of find your personality, your, your angle, basically. And again, like for me, like I mentioned before, getting into to like UART stream, UI art streams might be kind of a cool niche for me, so. I do agree about having a unique personality as well. Uh, you're on the, the cable <laughs> with your shoe. But yeah, um, having your own voice and having your own personality is great to stand out from the rest of the others. Um, especially with me, uh, I wanted to be a positive creator, but how could I do that with while being angry or a grumpy husky? Well, usually when you think of angry or grumpy, you think of a negative thing. But what I did was be positive with it. So it just flips it around, and it's unique. You don't usually see people do that. That's how I make my own unique personality. So. Okay. Yeah. That's really good fiction. You actually bring up a really good point about determining the style, the voice of like just basically the per the persona of your content uh, pro uh, persona essentially. So for like uh, Diffuse and Whip, like how do you determine like the style, the voice, and basically the overall profile of your content creation? Well, how I've uh, put myself as, at least my persona, my avatar on VR chat, um, lewd. That's just about it. <laughs> Most of my videos, like when I first started, it was uh, kind of easy and soft, and then I just like made it like lewd. I have the videos taken down to prove it. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but I've come down a little bit more since then, just because. So I'm not sure if you guys do follow me on TikTok. My account got banned for a week permanently because, let's be fair, as we all know, there are kids on TikTok who just want to make furries lies crap so they'll do their best to bring down accounts which they did so but with my discord server I have and everything I was able to get people just to spam TikTok saying this was unfair and everything like that and that's the unfortunate side about TikTok is how easy you can get to get banned because people report your account but for my first one and such yeah mine is just lewd. I am just what? I mean, you can see, look, he has half lidded eyes. I don't ever take them off because that's just me. <laughs> that's just me all the time. But that's me. Yeah, I, it's, it's one of these things, like, you might have uh, certain expectations or, or elements that you're looking to incorporate into your own streams, for instance, your own content on, on Twitch. Um, but I, I think there's no real answer to the. I mean, if you're asking me personally, I... I personally like to be more of myself, more just what you see is what you get. Hopefully I'm the same in, in person as what you see in my streams, that kind of thing. But I can't blame people out there who want to be, again, uh, more of like the, the, the showman where they put like one million percent of energy into the streams and they're like exhausted completely after like three hours of streaming. Like, I, I totally get that. Yeah, there are people who are like that. There are people who do just strictly like personas where they alter their voices or you know whatnot it, it really is up to you to like do your your research and everything and 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 have a you know some it's some uh, inner reflection on what you want to accomplish as a streamer you know um and and just try to find your own voice so
I think I already answered that. Yeah, question. you're fine. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> So I want to pivot a little bit to kind of the actual process of content creation. So to the panelists here, like what are some of your favorite tools that you use for content creation? What do you like about them? What you don't like about them? So just general comments about the tools you use for content creation. Uh, now when we talk about tools, or tools. Like apps. Okay, like apps. apps. That's what we're talking about. It can be physical tools too, like lighting or whatever. I mean, for me, whenever it comes to just VR chat, there's, I can't remember what the app is called now, but it's like a pen or, like, you can set the camera off in one section. Now, I don't use this much, but it's on the app. You can, like, pan your camera around VR chat like a movie fit, like movie picture. Like, you can pan it out, pan it in on your face, just move it around. It's a great app. I just can't remember what this, it's called at the moment. I'm bad at it. I just download the app. I'm like, let's do it. That's all I am. But for my first two videos that I do, I use just like a little light stand that has a little halo ring on it, and pretty much that's it. I just do the most basic thing possible because you don't want to spend too much when it comes to content creation because, especially when you start out, you don't know how you're going to do, and that's the downside of content creation, especially if you want to get into it, you want to make yourself known, you want to make people laugh, you just want to be out there. You don't know how it's going to go down for you, so you don't want to like drop your entire bank account into this one thing without knowing how it's going to go first. Now, the stuff I bought, I still use since day one. And like I said, the only thing about VRChat, now VRChat, to do it properly, like to get good like quality like video inside the game and you know not get 16 frames a second, because once again, it's VRChat. Um, it's just been a lot of money, unfortunately. I can't tell you how much I've spent on my PC system, but uh, no, <laughs> no. But like for like first use, if you have first use, you just have something that you want to think you can make videos with. The little Halo ring I bought was fifty dollars set. That's it. You have that, your phone, you're good to go. That's all you gotta do. It's a very good point too. Uh, like if you're if you're just starting out with um, content creation, I, I totally echo that a million percent. I, I knew that when I was getting into content creation, I wanted to do it strictly just, like, like I said, to meet new people and all that. So, But I, I know that there are people who just want like almost instant success. I know we're getting off topic here, sorry. Oh, but good. yeah, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so it's like, you know, if, if you expect to like explode overnight, chances are you're, you're not going to. So don't blow a ton of money on things and then ex expect all that, so. Um, but as far as like uh, what apps and everything, at least from Twitch's perspective, they're, they're the basics like OBS Studio, of course. I highly recommend that over Slobs, Streamlabs OBS, because that is a more of a resource hog. Uh, if you're looking to get into the VTuber model scene, uh, VC Face, VTuber Plus, highly recommend. I know Meeps just came out with um, a competitor to that as well. Um, some kind of like Either, you know, some editing software that you can use for your, you know, overlays, maybe videos, stuff like that. Mix it up. I know we just started looking into that, and it's huge from what you can do, potentials with, with, with that and overlays and channel point redeems and everything on Twitch. So mix it up. If you have not looked into that, please do. Sometimes when you're doing a um, first suit video, um, you don't really need much. I use natural lighting from my window all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I don't use any light at all. Since anybody who's ever seen my videos with my grandmother, they're poor quality. But sometimes just having a camera is the best thing. Now with VR chat, I actually, when I do VR chat videos, um, I do not actually do editing. I have a team. <laughs> I have two cameramans and one of them is also my editor. Now it's good to... Okay. <laughs> That's definitely the wrestling panel. <laughs> but yeah, um, I have two cameramen and one video editor and one of them is the cameraman. He's um, unfortunately not here. I wish he was. He's a great guy. Um, but it's also good to have people around you that help 
you as well, because you want to surround yourself by people that care a lot about what you want to do. So yeah. Actually, I didn't need to get back on the subject about VR chat because I forgot to mention what I use to record VR chat videos, which is OBS Studios. And OBS Studios is a free software you can download, and it's amazing to use. Like I'm assuming, not assuming. A lot of furries do use this for Twitch, which I do that use it for Twitch too, and for VR chat videos. Now, for the secondary purpose of VR chat, how to edit the video, videos themselves, when I first started out, I used this like cheap program on Microsoft, because like I said, you don't know what's going to go happen, and you don't want to go out there just spending money, wasting your brain count, just in case you don't have it. And it was called Shortcuts. And it was, for what it is, it was amazing, and it worked very well. Now, I now I use Sony Vegas Pro. But for a good editing software system, especially for VR chat, shortcuts is a way to go from the very beginning. And then if you think you're, you know, if you want to be more successful, or if you're getting more successful and you think you can just make better quality content VR chat videos or whatever you do make. Now I know Sony Vegas Pro does have a lot more features on theirs, but you're also paying the price for it. But as I say, starting off for editing software, now you don't have to edit like IRL videos. But if you want to, when you, if you do IRL photos or not, photos, but videos, you can just use the Twitch app. I mean, there are also editors, you get apps on there or just ads on there sometimes saying like CapCut. That's another thing you can use for TikTok. But usually you just use TikTok, just do one clip at a time, and just like mimic the sound if you're doing that. That's what I did at the very beginning. Well now I just edit all my stuff on my computer. But just from the very get-go, especially for VR chat videos, OBS, free software, you just gotta set up for VR chat. And like I said, Shortcuts is a Windows app you can buy. It's only $10, it's very cheap, and you can do a lot with it for a video editing software, to be honest. And then from there, as it goes on. Okay. Any questions? Oh, sure. Do you guys know that the video is What's that? It's a similar video editing software. I have not used that, but that's actually a great thing to think about. Is there are free video editing softwares out there. I just didn't think about that when I first went. I just kind of went to the Microsoft Store because I didn't know what I was doing. So I just like typed in video editing software, and that was the first thing to come up. Was like bye. That's it. But the more you do these videos, the more knowledgeable you come with these video editing softwares, and that's why I went for Sony, Sony Vegas Pro, because it's very quality. Yes? No, no, oh, oh no. It is uh, $10, and that's it. Yeah, so you have a one-time purchase. Now, like I said, for people who do have Sony Vegas Pro, that's uh, 60 or no, $53 a month. It's worth it, but you're paying for it. But the shortcuts, shortcuts $10, you're good to go. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So I'm going to change the topic a little bit, but um, usually with content creation, there's the inevitability of getting comments, good and bad, from your audience. How do you handle those kind of comments, like positive comments, negative comments? Do you, like how, what is that process in your head? Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of hate comments sometimes on my videos, and whenever I do get over 50,000 of them, 50,000 views most of the time, and usually a lot of them in the comment sections, like at least 30 or 40 comments are something about, you know, fatherless child, as we all know. Uh, quit TikTok, uh, act your age, um, kill furries, you know, all the same stuff you hear from kids, to be fair. But normally, what I do, is just ignore them. Like, I know it's gonna be hurt you and hurt your pride, but you have to think, these are just people who are wanting a reaction out of you. They want you to not acknowledge them. They want you to know that you're hurt by what they said. Now, there are people who do go into the comment sections and mention try to fight back, but that's what they want. They want you to fight back, they want you to think, know that you're losing, you know, in their minds. And I just ignore them. Ignoring them, to me, is the best thing to do, because, in the end, if you do actually acknowledge them, they're winning because they know that they're getting into you mentally. Yes? yes? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. In the back. Okay. <laughs> the door, by the way. 
I love the suit, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's way more fun to just fight him with kindness. Just say something that they never expect. Like, oh, yeah, you too. Have a nice day. Or, well, not you too. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Why are you talking? Have a fun day. Just be like, yes. Have a fun day. To be fair, you're not wrong. I, sometimes, if I'm feeling like a bit like uh, quirky or whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure what to say. But I'll just go into the comment sections and say something like that nice. Like someone the other day said cringe. I was like, well, thank you for commenting. Now free videos will be on your FIP. I just yeah. said, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm gonna go this way now. Oh, yes, yes. you. There's someone who wanted to see the photo of Benedict. Where did you say? Their reaction to you was more about them than you. It's very true, very true. Do the content creation because we have no idea what the issue is. But anyways, um, how I deal with the negative comments, I am from the South and I'm, I have a thick skin and I was raised by a dad that was kind of hard on me. <laughs> um, but because of him, uh, I was able to ignore what people think of me. He always gave me advice, like, at the end of the day, who cares what they think? They're on the internet and you don't know them. Care about the, the only time you should care about what anybody says about you is that if they know you personally. If they don't know you, then you shouldn't care. And that's just how I see it. So they can say whatever they want. It boosts my algorithm in the way. <laughs> just to be honest with you, so the more they keep going at it, it's better for me, so. <laughs> Okay, so for the last two minutes or so, I would like to ask the panelists, what would you have liked to know at the beginning that you now know about content creation? Like, what advice would you give to beginning content creators that want to basically improve their content creation or just want to start out that you want to give some advice to? Uh, I, know. <laughs> I think all my questions are good, but... I know. Yes, yes, all of them are good, been good. Um, Good questions, actually. It's very good questions. Uh, especially when I first started VR chat, I didn't know how to aim the camera at myself when I was recording videos. So I was doing it like you would do if you're streaming on Twitch, which is you know the normal way a camera would be set up. But to fit your angle and everything that's seen on the phone of your from the camera, you have to have it at an angle a rectangular shape, if you say the most. That is what you have to do to be able to get VR chat completely you know, on your phone. That's one thing I didn't know at the very beginning, and another thing, especially when editing it, I didn't know that if you don't do it correctly, then there's gonna be a black screen on one part of the side of the phone. So my first three, four videos <laughs> are um, some I'm not like proud of, but I'm still happy I did them because it's a learning point for me. Now, for when I first started, doing just IRL like first two videos. Uh, mine was about lighting. It's all about lighting and how you effectively use it. And just how you project yourself in the camera. It's kind of hard, especially when you're not looking, able to look at the camera. Now you can do a face, like, you know, do a front forwarding face camera, but they don't have like the best resolution. They don't have the best frame sometimes. And normally I do it the other way around where, you know, you have the rear cameras they have better resolution, they have better framing. Now, it's kind of hard to like put yourself in that, but what I would just do normally is just record for like maybe 10 seconds, put yourself in frame, and just get where you're gonna be at inside that frame. Now, it'll, get, it'll take a minute to get too used to it, because once you do this a lot, you'll figure out how your phone's set up, so you'll be able to get it, like, you'll get it very quickly, you'll get it down to a pattern. But that's how, in my way, I've learned from like my video editing, skin, like video editing, and just aiming cameras in both VR chat and in IRL. This is a really good question. Um, and after thinking about it, I think for me, like one of the, the biggest things, especially when I first started streaming, was um, I felt this like need to have to please everybody and and be everyone's like best friend, like everyone. Whether it's other stream like streamers, content creators, viewers, and everything, and I th I'm I'm trying to get better at like understanding that even outside the fandom, outside of streaming, everything, just IRL, like I mean, normal everyday situations, 
it's okay to like be okay with the fact that we're not always going to get along with everybody. We don't always jive with everybody. So I'm trying to like let go of that that feeling, that vibe, that just because we're all maybe in the same community, same whether it's the furry community or streaming community, that we just need to instantly get along with everybody across the board. So I think that would have produced a lot more stress, like mental stress on myself, and and you know everything that comes along with that. Um, as as I've kind of more like, adopted that that feeling, that vibe, I've noticed that I've stressed a lot less and started to embrace more of the close friendships that I've developed over the years that I just cherished to death. So that's my answer. This is a really good question. <laughs> but I would say one thing that a lot of people do and they give up too quickly after they fail. I'll tell you one thing. Just because you fail doesn't mean that you should give up. If anything, you should take it as a learning curve. Because the more you fail, the more you learn, the better you get. And that's that's actually the shortest answer I get, but I actually do. I will also say, especially with all the stuff I'm doing now, you'll never be perfect at what you do, but you can get a pattern down to what you do, which is what I do now. But there is always a learning curve for you know editing skills and just videoing, videoing. There's more to it than like everything else you get on the editing program for you know Sony, and there's more on OBS and VR Chat and the app I can't remember that I use in game. But you'll always will discover more on these programs, so everything you just learn more as you go. You'll never be perfect at it, but you'll definitely learn more skills as you go. That's what I can say about these apps. Okay, so we're going to last two or so minutes. I know I promised a uh, Q&A and a uh, meetup, but just so just a little bit of an example from each content creator. We have some videos, but the HDMI cable is not linked up to the speakers. It's just linked up to the projector, so it's actually going to be very low. But um, we'll start with the fuse. We'll go over left to right. Uh, I'll leave it up to the fuse to determine which video he would like to show. <laughs> the Sonalica one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Loud enough, right? All right, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's loud enough. <laughs> now we'll go with fiction. Well, which one do you want? Anybody have any um, questions for the panelists? While for the last ten or so minutes, yeah, go ahead. Oh, absolutely. So earlier you talked, you know, you encouraged everyone if this is something they want to do to go out and do it. That sounds great. Sounds positive. And you also talked about the mental health aspect, which made me think about safety, right? Safety isn't just for children online. Like online, there's some real monsters, right? And when you talk about being yourself. 
being authentic, being creative, you're putting yourself out there as a product for the whole public to consume. So to each and every one of you there, what do you, what, maybe just one piece of advice, what piece of safety advice, whether it's from doxing, getting your public information put out there, uh, what type of uh, safety or caution would you give the crowd if they do decide to put themselves into something like this? The one thing is, uh, you're always going to, there's going to be someone you're going to make mad when it comes to just making videos online, especially as a furry. You're going to make someone mad, especially someone who hates furries in general. Um, my retaliation to it sometimes, if you don't want these people, like, knowing that you exist, if you don't want them following your account on either Twitch, just any social media in general, my best idea is just to block these accounts entirely. Because you don't know who those people are, and you don't know what they're capable of. Because they could be some kind of like brain, like or they could be a hacker pretty much. They could just know what to do, or they could just be a kid, just not just saying stupid crap. But if you are safety about that, like I was that that way. That's first. I would block anyone who would say some mean stuff just because I don't know what they could do. They could just report my account for no reason. They could just give out false information to the social media platforms. And there's really no repercussion, especially if they come at you in droves. Because like I said, my account on TikTok was banned for a week permanently, just out of nowhere. And I hadn't done anything wrong, because when I was getting, well, when I got banned from TikTok, I was editing a video to put onto TikTok, and I hadn't posted in a week. And the sign came up saying, you're permanently banned, logging out, save your data. That was it. And just like I said, I spam TikTok to get my account back, which I do now, thank God. But just protect yourself. Just if you don't want them following you. Just block them. Have two-step authentication on on all your email addresses and whatever you use for passwords. Two-step. I have two-step on everything. I know it's not. It can be hacked sometimes, especially with links and such. On Discord, there's some links to go around in your private messages that can just go past your encryption. Go past two-step authentication. And you'll use the last one that you use in there, and your account's gone. Just be careful what you do, what you press, and what you t who you talk to on these platforms, because you don't know who you're talking behind that screen. I actually have one tidbit of, um, I don't know if it's strange information here, but one thing that people um, often don't think about, too, is your PayPal account. And uh, it's a, I believe it's still free to do this. Change your, changing your PayPal account from like a basic account to a business account you make sure you look at all the documentation, make sure it makes sense to you. Now, the reason why I recommend this is, is because um, you can change your displayed name whenever you make a donation to a streamer, that sort of thing, or if you're a streamer yourself and you want to protect your identity. Like, my name shows up as, like, you received a donation from Diffuse Moose. It doesn't show my real name. So be very careful about that if you really are protective about hiding your name and everything from being doxxed and everything. Look into PayPal business account. I would have to also agree with uh, with, with uh, words. Whiplash. Whiplash. <laughs> um, you can do a second uh, alt as well, um, but I also highly recommend VPN. Uh, VPN is also a very great source as well. Um, be, well, I was about to. I, I can't remember the other thing I was about to say because it just got a brain fart. <laughs> I was thinking about cybersecurity stuff, and that's my major, and I, yet I can't explain it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll just say that VPN and the second authorization kind of thing definitely helps. I was going to say also, if you're being docked, crash overwrite network can help you. Oh, yeah, that definitely helps as well. All right. Any, um, any other questions? I saw a hand raised. Okay, okay. What would you suggest when you got a video idea? and you kind of need extra people, but you don't have them at the time, you just don't have them in general. Like, what would you suggest? I would suggest save the video idea, write it down on a piece of paper or in your notebook to do that later, to make friends with or just at another time, um, and just work on other videos for the time being. Now, for that question, uh, depending if we're talking about, you know, IRL with first dudes or VR chat with multiple people. Now, uh, on VR chat, especially on Sony Vegas Pro, there's a green screen function you can use 
and it's really good. And you can actually act out the video yourself by yourself as long as you know where to put your avatar in place. And it'll look like there's multiple people in the video. I've done it before. Now, when I did a shortcut, you can tell there's like a little green hint there because it's not the most accurate you know, programming system, but you know, it's cheap. But for IRL stuff, now, usually I do like multiple views, like not with the same, like two people in the same like camera angle because usually I just do everything by myself. Now, I would say in that retrospect to do multiple people in the same like angle camera angle, I feel like some kind of green screen would have to be involved for that. But for VR chat, yeah, if you have this OBS green screen through the uh, app that I have, I don't know the name of it still, and just do different avatars, just do what you have in mind for that, like if it's like a crowd function, now that would take a while, I feel like in that scenario, that would have to be, I feel like a friend function where you just grab people, be like, hey, come be in my vi uh, video real quick. It'll be like less than five minutes, now get it, you can get out of here. But that's how I would handle it. Thank you. Uh, we'll take one more question. Yeah, in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so on a bad day, if you all have bad days, uh, is there any time that you, when you're making content, say, wow, I just had a really shitty day, I'm going to make this content, do you ever channel that kind of emotion or pain into the content that you create? Or like, you know, do you express it in any way through your content? 30 second answers. That's a good question. <laughs> For me, I mean, at least on Twitch, I don't, I try not to like bring that negativity into stream as much as possible. Like I said before, I, either I decide like I've had a really bad day and I'll just not stream or I'll try and hit the go live button and put the, the, that negativity behind me and like, it's almost like going from, you know, a, a tough work week into the weekend, like, it's the weekend now, I'm gonna enjoy this, I'm gonna deal with work when I have to on Monday. Leave all the negativity at the doorstep and just basically move on and enjoy your, your stream. I usually do not uh, put any negativity in my videos because as you know, I'm the positive, wholesome content creator. Um, if I do have a bad day, um, I deal with my issues there, so I don't bring it into my videos. Um, and once that's cleared up, then I go back to being my, you know, aggressive, positive self. Now, when it comes to me with negativity, especially in comes of videos, uh, I usually wouldn't let it affect me, like, for, like, a good video. Like, if it's going to be, like, more of a wholesome video, I wouldn't just make that video. Now, there are some videos and there are some sounds out there that have, like, angriness or just angerness in the actual, like, sound itself. Now, if you like to take that aggression out in that video to have a more, what's it called? Like it's more accurate, more accurate representation of that character you're playing in VR chat or in your fursuit. <laughs> then I would say, do your, like, if you feel like it, then I would just say go ahead and just act upon it if you want to. But normally, I would say if you're having a bad day and you don't want, don't feel like doing a video, and you don't want it to just affect how you do this video, then I would just hold back on it for another day until you know this negativity just surpasses you. Because otherwise, your video might come out, might just come out. You don't know. It might just come out bleh, or it might actually come out good. But I wouldn't say most well, of the time it's going to be bad because you're not putting your full attention into this video. And it's just going to be just all over the place, and it's going to have no direction, even if you have the sound involved into it. Okay, can we get a round of applause for the panelists? <laughs> Good job, all of you. Um, we, the, the room is open until 8.30, so if you guys want to meet, diffuse, fiction, or whip, uh, they'll be up here. Um, they'll be, uh, you guys can meet them, so, so go ahead.